What's going on, Motor City Sports Talk? We back. It's your boy CJ Goodfellow. We talk about the Detroit Pistons, and they finally have um, got rid of Jeff Bowers. They decided to part ways. I'll leave the article link in the description. And, um, you know, Bowers was was believed, uh, over, was overseeing the draft process and, um, you know, was thought to be kept until the draft. And, you know, he, he made a second-round pick or whatever. So um seemed like that ain't going to be the plan no more, you know. So they must be closing in on signing the general manager slash basketball president of basketball operations. Um, so, you know, he he was around long enough. Uh, it was some talk about he might be in the running for the president operation job. He was already in the front office, just that Stan Van Gundy just made the final calls. He put the Blake Griffin trade together. So, you know, they got rid of him, man. And I think they had to. They got to get off a fresh start. Uh, like I said, get somebody young and innovative. They got a plan in there, and I think they should give them total create, create, creative control. You know, however they want to create this team. They, if they want to trade Blake Griffin, trade Blake Griffin. They want to trade Reggie, trade Reggie. They want to trade Dre, trade Dre. You know, don't try to handcuff a candidate when they come in here, and that's how you don't get the best candidate. Trying to lay parameters and ground rules down as far as the roster. Let them do what they do. You let Stan Van Gundy be, bring, you know, Reggie and um. And um, you know, uh, Reggie and Blake in, and you know, eventually before that, Avery Bradley and Tobias Harris and all those guys in. Look, that it is president of basketball operations, the same shot that you gave Bowers and, and Stan Van Gundy. Let them have be flexible. Let them, you know, trade and create this roster in their mold. Because if you don't, you're not giving them the best shot to be the best candidate they can be. And you're gonna be firing them in three or four years, crying about you know they didn't get the job done because. In your mind, you think you think Dre Jackson and Griffin is a championship, you know, base, which is not. It's barely a playoff, you know, base that you can build around. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, I think that's why it's so hard for them to find a candidate. A lot of guys are pulled out of even in the running for this job because, from what I hear, they want them to keep that that core roster, and that's not a winning core. Your money tied up into three guys that ain't winning basketball games who don't defend. You know, who ain't prolific scorers, who ain't the greatest point guard, who ain't the great big man. You know, it's it's a shitty situation, man. Excuse my French. It's really, really messed up. And you got to start trading those guys to get better. You know, don't just try to build on the fly. You got to rip it down and build it up in NBA. It's not the NFL. It's not Major League Baseball. You know, so because you compete with some glamour teams and some glamour cities. So that's that's tough. To, that's tough to compete with, man. It's uh, the dude from the Brooklyn Nets. Um, he's the leading candidate, Tarjan uh, Langdon. You know, uh, he was a dookie. Uh, he worked at San Antonio in the front office. Then he got assistant GM job with the Brooklyn Nets. And he seems to be uh, the head, the lead candidate to take over the president basketball operations. He's a guy to play for the Cavaliers for a few years, then went overseas. He got in on the scouting and eventually the front office gig. So, I don't know too much about him, but if he came from San Antonio, you know, he must be, you know, fairly good, you know. So we'll see what, you know, if he becomes a candidate, we'll see what he got. I like it. It's young and innovative, and hopefully they give him, they give him free reign to do what he got to do, you know, because he's been part of a championship organization. And also in the running for front office jobs is still Brent Berry and still, still Tayshaun Prince. So, you know, they're trying to build them a young, you know, uh, front office. And I think that's good because these young guys know what it takes to develop players and take to build, you know, you know, formidable squads, you know. So, um, I don't know too much about him. You know, I just know he's a dookie. He was San Antonio, then he was with Brooklyn for the front office. So, he must be good to work his way up his ranks so fast. So, um, you know, I wish him the best. And if he gets the job, he gets the job. You know, hopefully he's the best candidate for the position. And hopefully, like I, sp- I spoke on, hopefully he get that free reign, that free will to do what he pleases with the roster. He's not handcuffed. And he's handcuffed. I, I got to pay. If I'm handcuffed, where I can't trade certain guys, I can't move certain guys that's make, taking up 80, 80, 90% of my my um, salary cap. Well, I don't want the job. You know what I'm saying? You know, I don't want it. Because at the end of the day, I'm telling you that what you need to do, you're telling me something else, and when I, and then when it turns out to be wrong, you still want to fire me. So, you know, you know, best of luck to Mr. Landon if he gets the job or whoever else gets the job. Um, I haven't heard too much about Kiki Vandewey getting the job. So, um, this guy's, you know, the lead runner. And uh, hopefully he can fit the bill in Detroit and uh, bring us back to prominence. But that's going to be a tough, tough duty. But I, he knows what he's signing up for if he gets a job. TV, yeah. Motor City Sports Talk, we gone.